Extreme Comedy Reaction. Today, I got you Greg Gerardo. Uh, requested by the Hateful Humorist. Also wondering if I'm okay. Yeah, man, I'm good. I've just been busy. Work, life, stuff happens. But yeah, I'm not gonna ramble on forever. Let's just get into the video. Good. I live in New York City. I came in yesterday and uh, I, I almost didn't get into the country. I coughed in the airport. Man, you don't want to do that, folks. Alarms go off, they tackle you, they drag you off to a room, they ask you questions for two hours, they took my temperature rectally. I enjoyed it so much, they asked me if I was here to get married. I'll tell you, that was right. It was, a, it was a gay marriage joke. But we do have to mend fences, let's face it, right? Canada was very mad at the United States. He didn't want to be part of the coalition of the willing in the Iraq war. He didn't want to be part of it. He didn't want to jump on board with every other country. Everybody was with the United States, folks. Everybody. Bulgaria. They sent a couple dudes. Uh, Spain. They put together a little good luck pinata that they sent over. Which I thought was very supportive. And Canada didn't go. Canada didn't go. Canada always goes to war with the United States. I don't think you guys don't even really have a military. You're just too polite to say no. You're like, all right, sure, we'll go. You're not a warmongering country. Let's face it, you're the only country in the world. You got your independence by asking nicely. It was crazy. <laughs> It's freezing over here. It's crawling with French people. You don't want to be a part of that, do you? We'll keep the queen on the money. What do you say? Come on. But you're so mad at the United States. It's the first time there's been this kind of tension between our countries. You're so mad you sent Celine Dion to Vegas to torture us for three years. I thought that was too much. What happened to peace and prosperity at the end of the Cold War? Wasn't there supposed to be no more wars? Everything was supposed to get better? What happened? Now it's the most dangerous time in history. Everybody's got nuclear weapons. India, Pakistan, North Korea. India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons. Those are dirt poor countries, folks. Where do they get nuclear weapons? Their armies don't even have matching uniforms, for Christ's sake. You know, they go to war, they gotta call each other up. Where's something tough looking? What is happening to the world? There's wars everywhere. There's more crazy, insane diseases. Every freak virus outbreak everywhere. You know, in the States, we had this uh, monkeypox outbreak. Monkeypox, a real disease called the monkeypox. And they figured out that people were getting it because they were playing with their pet prairie dogs. And they tracked it down. Within three days of the first outbreak, they, they tracked it down, tracked it back to a, a pet shop in Wisconsin where a prairie dog had shared a cage with an African rat from Namibia and became infected with the monkeypox. What kind of detective work is that? Who's doing this stuff? Where, where's Osama bin Laden? Where's Saddam Hussein? Where are the weapons of mass destruction? We can't, we can't, we can't, find, we can't find any of this stuff. We can't find any of this stuff, but we find a gopher with the sniffles and a terrarium in Madison, Wisconsin. City, and that's, you know, that, every, you're worried about terrorism all the time. The other day, my son says to me, Daddy, how come the bad men hate us so much? How come the bad men hate us? How sad is that? I actually, I actually got tears in my eyes, because he's 18. <laughs> what kind of a moron am I raising? I said, I don't know why they hate us, dummy. Why don't you read the paper and form your own opinions? But he's not gonna read the paper. Americans, let's face it, Americans have no idea what goes on in other countries. Americans don't know anything about other countries. We don't read the paper. Well, I don't, wait a minute. Don't, don't turn me into the Dixie Chicks up here with that. I'm saying we don't read the paper. I'm not saying, you know, we stink badly enough to deserve that ovation. <laughs> we don't. Americans have no idea what goes on. I was talking to this Arab guy the other day, and he said, why do the Americans always support the Israelis? Why do the Americans always support the Israelis? He said, it's probably because in America, the Jews have all the money and they control the media, which is ridiculous and paranoid and really only part of it. <laughs> Ameri Americans have no idea what goes on in the, in the Middle East. The average American has no idea what's going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians. So basically, Americans support the Israelis for one reason, because the Israelis never do this. <laughs> That's pretty much it.
And the average American's like, I don't know what's going on over there, but I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going with the team that ain't doing that. That I don't like. And then this guy told me it stinks for him. He's always stereotyped as a terrorist. Whenever he travels, people assume he's a terrorist. And that does suck, but you know what? You know, in America, every ethnic group has a stereotype that they've had to overcome at some point in their history. I'm half Colombian and half Spanish. I don't get upset every time people assume that I'm a bullfighter. I don't. I just deal with it. It's my little cross to bear. I can't be seen with a sword or a cape. You don't think that hurts me as an American? You don't think I'd love to wear my skin-tight pink capri pants with to be dazzling on them? Now in America, they don't even say French. They don't even say French. Freedom fries, freedom toast. Even fiance, even French words like fiance were changed. Even fiance, they're changing to person who'll eventually suck the will to live right out of me. They're changing it. I can't, uh, I can't figure out the relationship thing. You know, I'm married, sort of, but you can't, uh, just once, I'd like to see a movie that gets relationships. You know, I rented that movie Monsters Ball the other day, and it was supposed to show you that love can triumph over racism, which is a great message, but the casting was ridiculous. You got Billy Bob Thornton playing a racist corrections officer who somehow manages to overcome his racism enough to have sex with Halle Berry. <laughs> wow, good to see people rise above the hate like that, huh? It's Halle Berry. I'm pretty sure even the Grand Wizard of the KKK could have walked across that bridge. If they, uh, if, if they wanted to make a big statement, it should have been Brad Pitt and Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Thank you. So there you have it, guys. Greg Gerardo. Uh, thanks to the hateful humors for the suggestion. Uh, I really like that. I'm sad Greg Gerardo has passed away. May he rest in peace very funny. He had other stuff on YouTube. I watched too, but it was very long, so I didn't want to for my first video to come back. I didn't want to have like a super long video. I just wanted something short. I'm sad that he passed away. Uh, I found him very, very funny. And yeah, for everybody that's wondering, just to reiterate or anything, I am okay. I just haven't been uploading a lot. Thanks for the concern. Everything's good. I'll try to upload more, and yeah, guys, I'll see you again soon. Peace.